Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Bend tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. And today we're going to be discussing solving multi-step linear equations. All right. Here we are. So these are going to be equations, ladies and gentlemen, that will involve more than two steps in order to solve. Let's check them out. So in problem number one, I have two times the quantity of x minus 3 equals to 90. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness something special. This is my favorite property in the world, and I don't know why. It's the distributive property. Matter of fact, I know a part of the reason why, and it's because I get a chance to get my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, arrows popping. Popping, just saying. It makes me feel warm and tingly all on the inside. I don't know why, but that's what's going on. Distributive property, let's get it started. So anytime you have a number or a term on the outside of a set of parentheses, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna multiply that term inside of the parentheses with every single element within it. So let's take a look. We have two times x is gonna give me two x. 2 times negative 3 is going to be negative 6, and I'll bring down my 90, ladies and gentlemen, equals to 90. Mm -hmm. So the first step, we are distributing the 2. I have 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and I bring down my equal sign and my 90. From there, we're going to isolate the term with the variable. Get the term with the variable by itself, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to do that using the addition property of equality. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the equal sign here. That's what's up, all right? Just burning through this problem. From here, notice that you have additive inverses here. You have opposites. Anytime you combine opposites, the answer is going to be zero. So in other words, it cancels out. So I'm going to bring down my 2x, which now equals to 96. So that's what I have so far. You don't like that 6 either? All right, let's fix it. There you go. That's a better 6. Then from there, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be using the division property of equality. So anytime I have a number, a coefficient in front of a variable, you're going to divide by that exact same number in order to get rid of it. So I'm dividing both sides by 2. All right. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, that x will equal to 96 divided by 2, which is 48. And that's my answer. And as always, I'm going to put a box around my answer because that's how I roll. That's how I do things. So that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Let us move on to the next problem here. In problem number two, notice that we have 10x plus 3 plus 12x equals to negative 41. On the left side of my equal sign, ladies and gentlemen, I have three terms. And two of those terms are what we call like terms. They're like terms. Like terms have the exact same variable with the exact same exponent on them. It's really important to to identify your like terms, ladies and gentlemen, because those are the terms you'll be able to add and subtract. So pretty important, huh? So here, that means that I'm going to be able to combine that 10x and that 12x together. So 10x plus 12x gives me a result of 22x. So I have 22x plus 3, which equals to negative 41. From there, I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides. Mm-hmm, just like so, ladies and gentlemen. My threes cancel out. I'm going to bring down 22x, which equals to negative 44. Once I have this negative 44 on the right side, notice I have the 22 multiplying on my variable x. I'm going to divide both sides by 22. And my x variable equals to negative 2. And that's it. Done and done. Let's do a recap over this one, ladies and gentlemen. We started out with the original equation, 10x plus 3 plus 12x equals to negative 41. I noticed that I had like terms. My 10x and 12x have the exact same variable with the exact same exponent on those variables. And I can combine those, meaning I can add and subtract. So 10x plus 12x gives me 22x plus 3 equals to negative 41. Remember to write down each one of your steps from left to right, ladies and gentlemen. Then I want to isolate the term that has my variable in it, so I'm subtracting 3 to both sides. I cancel out those additive inverses, those opposites, bringing down my 22x equals to negative 44 because like signs add and I keep the sign of the biggest number. And then I divide both sides by 22 to give me a result of x equals to negative 2, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we have thus far. All right. Then let's move on to the next problem. Let's check it out. 
With our next problem, we have example three here. We have 4x plus 23 equals to 6x minus 11. I'm going to start, ladies and gentlemen, by subtracting 4x to both sides. So I'm going to subtract 4x on the left side. I'm subtracting that 4x on the right side. And notice how this time, I'm going to end up with my variable on the right-hand side of the equation. The reason for that, ladies and gentlemen, is I prefer a positive coefficient. I like the number in front of my variable to be positive. So that's what I'm going to do in this problem here, is cancel out those variables on the left side, and then I'm going to resolve them on the right side there. They're going to end up resting there. So I'm bringing down my 23, which equals to 2x minus 11. And then I'm going to add 11 to both sides of the equal sign. So here I'm adding 11 to both sides. And my 11s cancel out on the right side. I bring down the 34 which now equals to 2x. And next, we'll use the division principle and divide 2 to both sides of the equal sign. So when I divide 2 to both sides of the equal sign, ladies and gentlemen, remember a fraction is a division problem. So 34 over 2 is the same thing as 34 divided by 2. That result is 17. So I now have 17 equals to x, and that is my answer. That's it. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. So we started out by moving all of our variables on one side of the equal sign. I chose the right side because I prefer a positive coefficient. So I subtracted 4x to both sides, bringing down my 23 equals to now 2x equals to 11. Then using the addition property of equality, I added 11 to both sides of my equal sign. 23 plus 11 gives me 34, which equals to 2x. I divide both sides by 2 using the division property of equality. And 34 divided by 2 is 17. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's number three. Let's check out the next one. In our next problem, ladies and gentlemen, notice that we have my favorite property in it again. I'm so excited. We get to distribute the two, ladies and gentlemen, inside of the parentheses. So I'm going to get my arrows popping. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get my arrows popping in here, OK? So I'm going to bring down my 7 plus 2x minus 10, which equals to 4x plus 3. That's what I have thus far. On the left side of the equal sign, I have like terms. Notice I have a positive 7 and a negative 10. Well, I can combine those, all right? So let's check that out. 7 minus 10 gives me a result of negative 3. So I'm going to bring this down as 2x minus 3 equals to 4x plus 3. Once again, I have a choice as to where I can put my variables, and I'm going to choose the right side again because that will give me a positive result. So I'll be subtracting 2x to both sides. Remember, our goal throughout each of these equations, ladies and gentlemen, is to isolate the variable, get the variable by itself. So we'll do that by any means necessary. All right. I just used the subtraction property of equality to isolate my variable on one side of the equal sign. Notice that my 2x is canceled out. I'll be bringing down this negative 3, which now equals to 4x minus 2x, which is 2x plus 3. Uh-huh. And then, still trying to get that term with the variable by itself, I'll be subtracting 3 to both sides. All right. So check it out. Check it out. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, a negative 3 and a negative 3 will combine to give me a negative 6. And this equals to 2x. What happens to these 3s? That's right. They cancel out. All right. They're gone bye-bye. Next, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to divide both sides by what number? Tell me. Say it. Very good. Positive 2. We're going to divide both sides by 2. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, your variable x equals to a negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. Done and done. Let's put a box around that. All right. So there we have that problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Let's change the color and turn the page. OK. Next, number five. I have 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 3 minus 4x equals to 1 minus 4 times x minus 5. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, I get a chance to do the distributive property again. I'm so excited. So I have my arrows. Say it. Popping. All right, got my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. And notice over here on the right side that since this term that I'm going to be multiplying, distributing by is a negative value, that I circled that negative to make me remember that it's negative as I'm multiplying it in there. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. A little tidbit to help you out. So I end up multiplying. Let's do this. 3 times 2x gives me 6x. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 4x which equals to 1. Negative 4 times x gives me a negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we will be combining our like terms. So on the left side, I can combine the 6x and a negative 4x. On the right side, I combine the 1 and the 20. 
All right. So 6x minus 4x, ladies and gentlemen, is 2x plus 9, which equals to my negative 4x. And this will be plus 21 when I combine that 1 plus 20. From there, I'll be adding 4x to both sides this time, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. All right, so the variables will remain on the left side this time, ladies and gentlemen. All right, on my left side, check it out. 2x plus 4x, that gives me 6x plus 9 equals to 21. From here, I'll be isolating the term with the variable by subtracting 9 to both sides. Using that subtraction property of equality, I bring down 6x, which equals to 21 minus 9, ladies and gentlemen, which is 12. And then I'll divide both sides by 6, and the 6's will cancel out. Anything over itself is 1. And x equals to 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Got a box for you, ladies and gentlemen. And that completes this tutorial for today that deals with solving multi-step linear equations. All right, hope you enjoyed it, right? All right, we had arrows popping in everything in this video. All right, very exciting. So this is Mr. Witt, ladies and gentlemen, with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Keep the request coming. And remember to send in your audio and or your video file to get in on our intros and outros because we'll include you. All right, so let's get that 15 minutes of fame out there, right? Let's get it going. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, take care. Bye. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net. That's T-U-T-O-R-M-E-M-A-T-H dot net. Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.